Chapter 2, Grace's Family Background Grace's life was far from perfect. Maybe from the outside looking in, people may have felt sorry for her and her family. Grace wouldn't have known, but it also didn't cross her mind to even care. They were living off of Joy's income, who was self-employed house cleaner, on welfare and used food stamps. Grace knew she wasn't rich and didn't have the means to get name brand clothing, shoes or book bags, etc. Secretly, she thought about wearing what everyone at school was wearing as a 7th grader in middle school so as not to be looked at as poor by other students or just to fit in. Ultimately, she couldn't care less. She learned to shrug at it, wear what she liked, and be happy to be herself. Joy and her husband, Alan, had been separated for quite some time, and there was talk of divorce. That didn't surprise Grace one bit. Alan had been in Oregon for the time of separation. He didn't come around much or at all, really. Alan wasn't much for traveling unless he had to. Grace didn't even know where he was staying in Oregon, but he stayed away. She didn't carry any ill feelings toward her dad. All her life, her parents were either together with much strife or just separated. She didn't know any different and even felt indifferent toward her dad being gone and the talk of divorce. She knew her dad, Alan, didn't and wouldn't step foot in the church door. He had been hurt by the church in the past. He decided to walk away and hadn't been back since. He was mostly an absent father, a workaholic, and alcoholic too. The majority of his day was spent at work and then at the bar and then, if he wasn't asleep, in front of the television. He worked in construction, more specifically drywall. Interaction wasn't really a negative experience with her and her dad. When Grace was little at nighttime, she would sit under his arm in the recliner and watch action movies. He didn't make her do any chores, though Joy would ask her to. Grace didn't have to do them according to Dad, and she liked that. There were times when Joy would have to pick Alan up from the bar late at night because he was too drunk to drive himself. Many times, Grace, Judah, and Anthony, their little brother, would approach the outside bar window, knock on it to get their dad's attention, letting him know the ride, Joy, was here. That was embarrassing. There were times Joy refused to pick him up so he would walk home. Grace remembered a time when they lived in Oregon. He walked home in the snow late at night and he looked as if he could have died from the cold. Joy was worried about him and covered him up to regain some warmth. He instantly passed out on the couch. Once, Grace recalled him coming home, slobbering, stumbling, drunk. He went to use the restroom and was in there for a long time. Joy checked up on him and found him bent in half sitting on the toilet asleep in his pants down and a lit cigarette in his hand, which burnt a hole in the linoleum floor. Joy was sure not to talk bad about him, whether he was with them or not, but she used those examples to show her kids that this was something they shouldn't do, get drunk. And she also added the dangers of cigarette smoking too. Grace knew Joy was frustrated with his lifestyle, but she still loved him, even when he was gone. This helped Grace have no ill feelings toward him and no temptation for drugs, cigarettes, or alcohol. Grace saw what it did to a man. For the most part, Grace formed her thoughts and opinions about both her parents based off of who they were and what they did. Grace was most comfortable living with her mom. Joy Jensen was a hard worker, caring, and did well with what she had. She never let on that there were any financial troubles or difficulties. She worked without complaint. She, a Christian woman, was friendly to everyone, loved meeting new people everywhere she went. Though not rich, she was the most giving and generous of persons. She had this one earthly desire, though. She had an intense curiosity to know the future, her future mostly. The future always intrigued her. Bible revelation and prophecy didn't seem adequate to her. Maybe she was just ignorant of it. It showed especially when she had unanswered questions about her own personal problems or problems of loved ones. She didn't just seek God for the answers, but it was a temptation to gain insight from any source she found, Christian or not. Most important to Grace though, Joy was faithful in going to church. Attendance was at least three times a week. They, Joy, Judah, Anthony, and Grace, went to Abundant Life Christian Fellowship at the time of the incident with a man's voice calling to Rocky. They went once on Wednesday evenings and twice on Sundays, a morning and an evening service. That's something Grace felt was a constant in her life. And in her heart, it was good and right. Grace knew she could and did believe the things she learned at church. 
everything in the Bible or what she learned was in the Bible. This included knowledge that Jesus died on the cross to pay for sins, that Jesus rose from the dead three days later conquering sin and death. When one believed this, they would have eternal life with God, as opposed to dying in sin to suffer eternal damnation in hell. According to the Bible, because she heard and believed these things about Jesus, she was saved, a Christian. As far as she remembered, she always believed these things. Church going was a highlight in Grace's life and her weekly schedule. She had a few friends at church and they usually sat all together with one of the families and sometimes were allowed to sit together by themselves as long as they were not being disrupted. Even though Grace loved to be at church, this is a place fear stealthily snuck his little face in the door and eventually found its way into the Jensen home and into the heart and mind of Grace. However, fear hid himself until the time was ripe. Joy and Grace, as with any and all Christians, were ever learning and growing at their individual rates. They struggled with their individual human desires, still got tempted, still slipped up, and still experienced trials and tribulations. They suffered earthly consequences of their own sins and sins of others. They were secure in belief that God was, is, and always will be sovereign and in control over all things. Joys and graces, though not perfect as yet, hearts were made new, no longer slaves to sin, able to exercise the commands of God. They become clean, forgiven, and justified, and were securely placed in God's family. God fathered, disciplined, cleansed, taught, comforted, and led them into sanctification. Sanctification was done along in their journeys. It was a process, a walk that would last until they passed into eternal life. Judah, on the other hand, kept to his own interests. He came to church begrudgingly, but tolerated it because he was allowed to sit in the back with his friends during the services. At other times, he was allowed to stay home instead. What he did with his time wasn't really known to Grace as often as he went out with his friends who lived around the neighborhood. They roamed the area or hung out outside most of the time. He wasn't involved in the family affairs, but enjoyed his time away from home. Anthony was the youngest sibling. He was a little less than two years younger than Grace, about to be 11 years old. His life revolved around what everyone did as a family. He had a particularly difficult time at school. Fifth grade was the worst for him in Sierra Vista. The kids were very mean to him. They would make fun of him and bully him. He despised going to school because of that. Eventually, Anthony refused to go to school and there was no way Joy was able to make him. He was very stubborn in that respect, and physically she couldn't pick him up or make him do anything. Even though she tried, Joy decided to homeschool for a little bit. Anthony was still reluctant with the work, but he stayed home and went to work with Joy so she could keep an eye on him. Eventually, Anthony decided that when Joy and Alan's divorce was finalized, he was going to move with Alan to Oregon for the school year and stay with Joy over the summers. This was his way of escaping and removing himself from the hostile environments and the people that hurt him.